the order pursuing the standard opening statement. This is the Northampton Conservation Commission for uh, the 20th of August, 2015. The commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the eight interests defined in the Massachusetts Wetlands Act and our duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that is consistent with open meeting law requirements and open meeting dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance. And we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask that the public limit their comments to issues within our purview. And today's agenda includes a continuation for notice of intent for installation of the new stormwater outfall uh, in, as part of the Hinkley Street and construction of the applicants that are in the Department of Public Works. And a request for determination of applicability to determine the installation of the sewage grinding station and related work in the buffer zone subject to the Women's Act that uh, the Hampshire County Council of Corrections. Uh, and a request for order for an extension of an existing order of conditions in West Hampton Road, a request for a certificate of compliance at uh, Dean Barron Street that the Pheasant Hill says to approach that the building of Pheasant Hill. All right. Is that the same thing? This is, this is part of the issue with Hampton Road. Um, then a request for an extension of the generic order of conditions for uh, North Hampton Road. Uh, do we have any minutes? We do not. Uh, I think not. So are there any general public comments that anybody wants to make? As opposed to the specific to a uh, particular case? If not, uh, the first item is uh, continuation and notice of intent for installation of solar for the way to the street reconstruction. And the DPW has requested a continuation without discussion at this meeting until October 8th at 530. Any motion to continue? So we do. And second, so we need a second to make the discussion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So uh, Next item, also scheduled for 530, so we can proceed, is a request for determination of applicability to determine the installation of the sewage grinding station and the way to the subject of the Wetlands Act. Uh, this is uh, the Hampshire uh, County House of Corrections of Walter Hill Road. Dave Conditioner does not have that over. Uh, I'm Chris Chamberlain from Berkshire Design Group here in Northampton. I'm a professional engineer in Massachusetts representing DCAM, uh, who's the lead on the project at the House of Corrections. It's a state project. Um, I'm going to give you just a very brief background about why the project is happening, which goes to why it's located where it is, and then an overview of the site plan, and then I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, so prisons in general have had uh, issues with wastewater streams, uh, with uh, fabrics and wrappers and contraband, anything you can imagine going down the sewer and clogging up the bar screen down at the wastewater treatment plant. This happens um, all over the country. There have been uh, different ideas on how to deal with it. One that's been very successful is um, a sewage grinding station, which is what we're proposing at the House of Corrections here in Hampshire County. Um, there's been a number of these installations. I know the, the company that we're working with is out in Florida, several installations there and other places. Um, essentially, we intercept the effluent flow out of the prison, um, bring it into a room with an open trench, um, and then there are two primary pieces of equipment. The first one is the grinder, which is a set of uh, big nasty teeth that chew up everything that may be coming down the line, pulverizes it in very small pieces. That flow then passes through the grinder, and then the second piece of equipment is a large auger, uh, which scoops up everything out of that waste stream. It's periodically dosed with water to wash the organics back down into the wastewater stream, but deposits all of the debris that should not be heading to the wastewater treatment plant uh, in a dumpster within the building, which is periodically removed um, and disposed of as solid waste. Uh, so no matter uh, how the illegal stuff gets in to the prison, this is how it goes out. This has nothing to say about that. Um, but this just handles uh, what is disposed of uh, by flushing, uh, which is 
quite a bit, as, as you might imagine. More than my job. <laughs> um, and I have been in one of these, and it is not a pleasant experience. Um, so, Uh, on a larger scale, this is Route 66. Uh, the main entrance to the jail is around here with the main jail building um, up in this direction. Um, so what we are proposing to do is the existing sewer line from the main building of the jail exits to an existing manhole uh, in Rocky Hill Road. Um, there is an existing, uh, what is, uh, what has become a wetland, uh, what was originally a grass swale that carries drainage from the jail to a culvert under the main driveway of the jail, which eventually makes its way across Route 66 to the marshlands and, um, and the stream that's on that side. And in fact, um, really just a small finger of that wetland is what we're concerned with uh, here today. Um, and so the grinding, so we're gonna intercept the, the um, effluent line with a new sewer manhole, pull it off into our new sewer grinding building, which is about 400 square feet. Um, there's a small control room, but most of it is the equipment room, which houses the grinder itself. And for the most part, the length of the building is dictated by the auger, which has to go, the arm has to reach down into this open trench, five or six feet down to the sewer level. Um, and then there's a counterweight on it. So uh, in the end, it's about a 35 foot long building. Um, and then, to access that building, uh, we have a 10 foot wide driveway that comes down with a small turnaround space and there's a set of extra wide doors um, to get the uh, dumpster in and out of this location. Uh, this work is within the 100 foot buffer, uh, go outside the 50 foot buffer of that uh, finger of the wetland. Um, this site, uh, the, the top of the site is relatively flat because there's a lot of parking, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, this front edge of the site, as you probably know from driving by there, is uh, sloped toward the street. And again, that's the reason why we had, why the, they had this uh, drainage suite along the front. Uh, and just looking a little closer at post grading plan um, and erosion control plan. Uh, in the temporary condition, of course, we have um, an erosion control barrier along the down slope edge of the limited work. Um, and then as far as stormwater, we're catching 100% of the new roof in the dry well, um, which will infiltrate on site since it's a small building. Uh, it's a relatively small in, uh, footprint for that infiltration. Um, and for the driveway to protect water quality as the water heads in the direction of the resource area, we've got a stone diaphragm, two feet wide, two feet deep, filled with crushed stone metal. Uh, has a filter fabric wrap, and that would be periodically uh, clean and top dressed. Um, and otherwise, the remainder of the water from the impervious areas goes through a pretty secure, circuitous route through some brush and woods area, um, and then eventually to that same drainage soil as it has today. So that's the quick overview. I'm happy to answer questions. Questions from the You're not actually doing any tree removal within the buffer zone, right? Um, not within the buffer zone, no. You sit on a concrete pad? Um, oh, that's what The building has a traditional foundation. Um, the mostly dictated by the depth of the trench, which has to, um, so if you imagine the, most of the slab of the building is flat and then that trench drops down five or six feet, um, and then the coatings of the rest of the building would be at the same elevation. Well, I'll use that for one thing. Um, I actually don't know what the construction schedule is uh, off the top of my head, uh, but okay. I can't see anything longer than six Um, and actually, unfortunately, the projects weren't presented together, but this project is being merged with the one um, you folks saw uh, a few months ago for the generator pad. So those are going to go up to bid and be constructed at the same time. So <coughs> construction behind will take place this year. I think that's a possibility. I'm really curious about the grind. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to answer what I can. 
again. And you can write everything up and then just <coughs> before it. So I'm just curious about how this, what you're doing here, interacts with the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Um, so one thing that happens is uh, there, there are a lot of, from my understanding, is it's mostly rags and t-shirts and things like that that um, I'm not familiar with prison operations, but uh, I know that that's a big problem. They get flushed down the toilets, um, end up in the sewer stream, and then they hit the bar rack at the wastewater treatment plant and they start clogging up, and they have to clean those out periodically. So this would take those, those that fabric, grind it up into little bits, and then pull it out and put it into a dumpster so it never reaches the, the treatment plant. The commission also gets notified of any sewer releases, regardless of where they happen in the cities. We get an awful lot of calls about things that happened on Route 66. It seemed to be in people's basements that DPW uh, uh, because there are clogs along the way. Right, and you can't get a clog in a manhole yeah. um, if it's depending on the shape and material of whatever's hitting on there. So you know, we're trying to capture the work. So there's some kind of screening or system that collects all that large material. Right. So the, the the, the grinder breaks everything down, and then the second piece is, it's, it's not really a pump, but it looks like an auger pump. Um, so if, if you imagine a, a large auger stuck into this trench, as it spins, it starts pulling the solid material up. Yeah. And again, it, it gets washed periodically with water, but it, it keeps spinning until it pulls that material up and then drops it in a dumpster and sends it Is that, sorry, nothing yeah. to do with weapons, but is that hazardous work? So, so where does it go? Um, my understanding is it's actually not a handle that it has this waste, but I, I don't know um, the, the handling uh, specifically. Uh, I know it gets taken away from wetlands, it's handled where they handle their solid waste, and then they dispose of it as per whatever regulations apply. Have you seen that it's taken some place you've seen? It would now be over. Right, or be no So this the access road that goes to this building is not is not treed at this moment. It's part of the lawn that's there. Is that an open is that open space right now? Um, the the existing tree line, uh, which is shown on the plans, uh, passes right through here. So again, there's no tree removal inside the buffer. There is some tree removal outside the buffer. Um, we we tried actually, we went through several iterations to try to get this out of the tree line because the jail doesn't want to go through cutting the trees either. Um, but in order to get uh, a reasonable grade from point A to point B and to, to make this turn, which you know, there are large trucks going down here, but pickup trucks and things like that. Um, we weren't able to do it, so we do encroach upon the tree line. It's mostly brush. There, there are a few trees in there. What's that shaded area that's coming across? Right here. Yeah. That, that's that the temporary traffic pad for the construction. Oh. Okay. This is combination grading and erosion control. It's a small project. So the drawings are doing double duty. And it's all cur currently all on the area that we're going to watch the roots. Lawn or brush. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to add to your comment on staff report? Motion closed. So, staff recommendation is uh, to issue a negative determination of standard conditions. Check box three to indicate that the work that is in the buffer zone will not alter the dangerous additional resource areas. Cheryl also says that we should uh, uh, not comply with that, uh, not comply with that.
motion. To move staff recommendations. Move staff recommendations. Second. Second. Further discussion? Amendments? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Thank you. Yes, well, that's what separate information included uh, standard conditions. Or at least you have REA Standard Right now. 
I mean, they can move the barn up now and move it all around as much as they want to, as long as it's outside the buffer. Right, well, that's a separate issue that yeah. there wouldn't be any violation. So there's no issue that's not a That's one option without um, any of the stuff. But if anything changes, like rerouting the driveway, Yeah, so um, the wetlands regs give five instances in which case an extension request can be denied and a new NOI required. So one of them is no work has begun on, begun on the project. So no work has begun on the project. Um, or new information not available at the time the order was issued has become available. I didn't think that was the case. Uh, where incomplete work has done damage, that's not the case. Where work has been done in violation of the order or where research area delineation is no longer accurate. So the first one, there's been no work for the building that work. Is um, the building barn in the middle of the driveway considered a violation? It's not a violation. It's outside the It's not what the plan is. It's not according to the original plan. But they wouldn't have needed to find the plan to, to do what's been done. But that list is permissive, right? That just says you may deny it, but not shall. So this uh, idea of bringing the driveway to the bottom, that's an, an incomplete, uh, it's, it's not a, when, when, when does something become a modification? It's just a, only a partial uh, completion of the... Strictly by the wetlands regs, we're not supposed to allow any modification so at even, all. Even only do... However, if, if someone, if they, if this had happened four years ago and, and they came and said, well, we only want to build the driveway here, this is, yeah, this is less of an alteration, do you have an right. issue? That's a right. right. smaller house. I mean, yeah. to me, the logic is you can't alter you can't the structure. It's more impact. intrusive than the But if you wish to build a smaller house, then I can't imagine that you would say, yeah. you know. And I do that on site visits all the time. Someone will say, well, I want, we had this shown here. Can we move it 30 feet away from the wetlands instead? Yeah, and right. Yeah, right. sure. I mean, in theory, that's not like right requiring as built plans because mm -hmm. you don't always build something that wedge. You know, so you would like to actually divert away from the wetlands. I imagine your concern is that if we were to move the barn, that we don't encroach upon the buffer zone or whatever that dotted line is. Yes. Uh, any any modification um, when it turns out I was part of this discussion, but whatever we approved, we approved with a certain uh, uh, amount of intrusion into protected and jurisdictional areas. And so anything that would go further than that was then beyond the scope of without reopening or going for a new notice of pen expand the scope of what we can do. So, uh, but less than uh, that amount of treatment we can do. That's what I was thinking about. Well, what if the rest of the driveway is just not completed? Uh, well, even under your scenario, if they move the barn and they're outside the barn, so it allows them to put the driveway in. Yes, that was but that's what, that was my question. But can the barn go outside the jurisdictional areas? That's what Sarah was. Sure. And then the driveway can still be built the same way as it's shown on the thing, and then there's no problem. Yeah, I, I don't see I don't see a big concern with an extension under these conditions like the side and how they're gonna do it. Except there's I think there should be some sort of agreement about how long the extension is. And we can extend for we can extend for up to three years but not required to so we can extend for short period. I'm just trying to figure out you drawn that. Yeah, and that's line. probably not accurate either. Um, all I tried to do was put this one. Yeah. You no, know, this isn't right either. Um, we have an aerial photograph that our site planner created, which I guess I don't have with me. Um, you know, where you can actually see the barn and he's putting the um, the buffer zones, but he doesn't. You can only see the part of the driveway that we built. Right. <laughs> so. Um, so I tried to match them up, and, and you can actually see there were probably several places you might be able to kind of figure it out. The 
barn is definitely not inside this buffer zone. So it, that means that it probably that it definitely is in this part of the driveway. Uh, but pushing the driveway, so pushing the driveway away from where the barn is shown, at least in this plan, actually just it's still you still remain outside the buffer zone. It's only when you get past, right? Right. Because this, because so you're. Right. If we were. All this area is outside the jurisdiction. So the barn, even if even if the drive even if the driveway is converted okay, so to go around the barn, this as is as long as it came back by right, right here, because this is where the bus is. Right. Yes. right. The idea is that it would join up though. Yeah, I'm just thinking about the cost of moving the barn versus what we're talking about here. 
pretty much exactly what it's going to cost. Right. To the barn. Well, I mean, I think it's been past practice, obviously, in this area that the 50 foot buffer, 50 feet outside the wetlands is protected, so there's no possibility. But between 50 and 100, um, you know, I think that the commission has allowed the past permanent disturbance.
Can I bring up one question? Sure. Uh, with the site of the house, um, do you have any purview over the type of foundation that's allowed to be put in there? If, if we didn't include that in the existing borders, so that's the building inspector besides that? Because according to the park, the um, water table is pretty, pretty high. And uh, you know, I was talking to Richard Jeske the other day, and it's been your practice if you're going to put a slab, you've got to have a four foot cross wall. That would just be this building. Yeah. Um, the other question is having to do with the driveway, the one that's at the end there, which to build out to 15 feet, the shared driveway, you're asking for it to be all the asphalt scraped off and prepared, and then you know, a new, complete new 200 foot paving job done. And Richard brought up the idea of, you know, it could be um, sawed and patched. Uh, but I don't know if that's diverting from. Uh, that would be a question. Yeah. So, um, so the, the common driveway, the, the material and the width and the pull outs and everything is completely different. That, that sounds like. I see. So if I wanted to bring that up, I could ask them about that to see if they'd be yeah. willing to. Yeah. It seems like it might be a more conservative way to. Go yeah, and I believe that the common driveway centers have changed since then. Uh, I don't know if they're more less. I mean, like a new, whole new, 200 foot driveway is going to be pretty expensive too. Then yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Good luck. We now have. Uh, next item, a request for a certificate of compliance. Uh, Even Barrett Street, the uh, city is Fabos, this is Fezzel Brown. Yeah. Uh, Mine's yeah. just yeah. yeah. Welcome. Hi there. My name is George Cost, I'm Cost of Consulting Engineers. I'm working for the Hampshire Property Management Group, this is the property management for uh, Fezzel Brown. And here today for a request for certificate of compliance for some work that was done in 1997 by another company that no longer exists. There's a drainage swell behind uh, the units down back in the Pheasant Hills. And uh, the swell is uh, filled with sediment and there's uh, debris in there, fallen trees. It's causing uh, difficulty with drainage, causing the uh, water to sometimes overtop the banks and then flood the adjacent units. Uh, which are about maybe 20 feet, 30 feet from the edge of the swale. And that's causing water to enter the buildings, and the Board of Health has issued uh, uh, violations on that. So uh, I was retained to come in and help fix the problem, clean the swale, and make it flow better, increase the capacity, and uh, realize there was uh, an order condition that was still outstanding. So So basically, you're needing a, a certificate of compliance in order to do the next phase of work? Exactly, yeah. I'm following the most intent for the work, and on a future one, we make it such that it will allow us to do continuous maintenance of the soil so that we would not come back. Uh, the work was permitted back in 1997. Basically, we're probably going to do the, very nearly the same exact type of work. Probably a simple way of describing the proposed work will be maintenance. Get in there, clean it, make sure it flows well, and then uh, and then do that periodically in the future just to keep the flow going in the right direction, not into people's uh, buildings. And the commission actually required with the last order that a maintenance plan be submitted, but and it hasn't been maintained. So is that? Getting in the way of our issuing a certificate? Not, not really, because the only alternative would be to issue some sort of enforcement. No, but at this no. point, the Board of Health is on And this is to enable them to, to go forward with like yeah. Something to consider. Of course, this kind of backs up the entrance mm -hmm. flood area, anyways, right? right. Oh, the favorite view? Yes, must perhaps. Universe, Ferrets. Doesn't mean it's not, so it looks like it's immediately 
we did yes. the Desmond as the next one. Those so the issue with this being so old is there things that are a little bit different now. So Jack and I actually went to Coach Life and walked around and there wasn't much to see. And then I looked at the materials that George provided and there was some section next to it. But there's also not much to see there. It's really filled in. It's very grown up. So the first step is the certificate of compliance in the Make a motion. I'll move. Can I a second? Second. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. So we'll probably see you again a little more. Shortly, yeah. Shortly, it's going to be great. Thank you very much. Good night. The certificate of compliance without email. Uh, yes, it will get recorded and then, no, not recorded. Um, I'll mail it to you, will have to do the recording. And then let us know. Okay, thank you very much. And DBW wants an extension for a generic order of condition. Me too. So that, so hold on. Older. And they, they so felt very, very bad. Last. So they submitted they submitted a uh, revised notice of intent. I have the one that played around. Um, DEP ended up having some concerns that turned out to be extremely minor. And we could have gone ahead with the hearing, but they had an issue with filing over yet. So this is just sort of a technicality. But this will be on the agenda in, in September. This is another six months? You can give them two months if you really want to. I mean, they figured just. Well, we're going to see him here on the 8th of October. <laughs> so, this is the 9th of October. So, they requested that the uh, that Nicole was out at the beginning of September. So, this is the second agenda. So, what is this involving? So, this is basically a permit for everything the DPW does so that they don't have to come in with a request for determination and return like to do something like that. Or, in some cases, fairly good. Some things they still have to do for now, so Like you can see. Is it regularly scheduled or repeated activities? Yeah, I mean, my sense is that they they manage the threshold pretty well. They don't try to push the limits and act as the hitless fee in transports is a little bit exceptional. Yeah, but, but that's also a brand new Right. I talk to DPW a lot. Uh, all of the old things are not sure a lot. Don't be able to talk to the old things. So, six months is too long. Yeah. But, what do you need to do the right length is three months? And then I'll come back and go to this probably before that time. Six months is too long. Close to Thanksgiving. Three months from the new move. We need an extension for the order of conditions. Three months. Second? Second. And all in favor? Aye. Opposed? So we Now we need because Representative for the Community Preservation Committee. And I guess that would be a good first step is to see if anybody's interested. <laughs> Don't all jump I'm on. interested at some point. Step on anybody's toes as the new ah, no. member. <laughs> oh, it's in there, it's on there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're talking about sort of the new down the road. You might be stepping on your toes. You don't want to do it. No, no, no. I'm <laughs> sure. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with the economic development housing and land use assignment. So I'll stay there. No, that's right. You do have another one. Right? More than fulfilling here. There's, there's 
Yeah. Uh, indirectly, yeah. But registry of deeds. Indirectly is the Yeah. Okay, but Jack, no. good of you to, to, to volunteer. Thank you. Um, and, uh, can, we, can I just call this unanimous? Seems unanimous. Seems unanimous. Okay. Anyway, gratefully so. Um, we next have uh, a previously approved agricultural preservation restriction on Hunts Road. Didn't get signed. So this was voted on um, probably six months ago. Um, this is a small piece that we're intending to use for possible trade land, but in any case, it's going to remain being parked. And this is $9,000 in basically the middle of the town. Yeah, it was Hunts Road and this is the one that we two rows that I'd never considering it in terms of trade for Rainbow Beach access. Yes. So nothing to vote on. One I think it's one that's a random piece in the middle of other large parcels. Yes. Granddaughters, nephews, oh yeah. <laughs> brother in laws. And then for mail, we have an environmental nor notification form for Roberts Medical Brook Channel improvements from the DPW. So this was an area behind New Santa Beach that was washed up during the rain. And they've been trying to figure out the solution for that. So this is just a notification to the state that they're required to do because they're disturbing over a threshold of bank and wetlands. And they will definitely be going to the supporting permit. Yes. And then. It's the only place I've ever seen otters. Really? Yeah, we see up in the reservoir. Uh, and then staff issued a permit in consultation with Kevin. I issued an emergency certification for a house on Main Street and leads and sort of partial permit. It was a hazard. Yeah. We've just. Approval or the case of design? No. What was the next door? Uh, no River. No River? This was oh. Moses Miller's property? Sort of right across from the bridge. Sold by the commission. Small. Oh. Right next to the bridge. Across from the bridge. Across from the Right. Which is moving. And we're not so We have nothing else? Anybody else have anything? So when's our next meeting? We're back to our uh, regular second and fourth? Yes, whatever whatever the second or whatever the second third. We'll just stick to uh, 530 as the meeting. Okay.